Episode 1, The Fergusons. Feeling tired, Steve? No, not a bit. I'm just excited. <laughs> You've been excited ever since the plane left New York. It's the thought of going home. What time do we arrive in London? About nine o'clock. So relax. Oh, I've got a thirst. Let's go to the little lounge and have a drink. Hmm? Mm, by all means. Pardon me, but I think you're sitting on my magazine. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, no, please, don't get up. But I'm sure I've got your seat. No, no, really. Oh, sit down, Robert, and don't make such a fuss. I'm not making a fuss, Helen. We're flying the Atlantic. This isn't a bus on Fifth Avenue. I guess there's plenty of seats for everybody. Oh, well, there won't be if you put your magazines on them. <laughs> <laughs> Trust my wife to have the last word. Uh, by the way, my name's Ferguson, Robert Ferguson. Oh, mine's Tim. This is my wife. How do you do? Yeah. Uh, not... Paul Temple? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, darling, I knew I was right. I told you, didn't I? I recognized you at the airport, Mr. Temple. No. I never forget a face, do I, Robert? Never? She thought you were Cary Grant. Oh. <laughs> I wish he was Cary Grant. <laughs> Is this your first trip to England? Oh, no, I've been over many times. My wife lived in London until we were married. Are you coming over on business, Mr. Ferguson? Well, not entirely. We've, um, we've got a boy at Oxford. He'll be 21 the day after tomorrow. How nice. Uh, what college? Uh, he's at Magdalen. Oh, that's my old college. <laughs> Is that so? Do you hear that, Helen? Mr. Temple was at Magdalen. Yes, I heard, darling. Um, here's a, a photograph of Richard and Mrs. Temple. It was taken last year. Oh, he's a good-looking boy, Mrs. Ferguson. <laughs> you must be very proud of him. We are. He, um... He doesn't look very American, does he? Well, you can hardly call him an American, Mrs. Temple. He's been at school in England since he was 12. Well, Richard adores England. Yeah, you can say that again. Every time we suggest he comes back to the States, we come over to England. <laughs> <laughs> What's he going to do when he comes down? Well, I, I think he's going to be a writer. His letters are full of books he's read and things he's written. Yeah. Oh, I know what you want, Robert. <laughs> you want him to go into that dreary old business of yours. But I don't believe in forcing a boy into doing anything he doesn't want to do. It's a great mistake. Don't you agree, Mrs. Temple? Well... If uh... Richard wants to be a writer, okay, he's a writer. Mm -hmm. But if he does decide to go into the old firm, well, it would make me very happy. Yeah, well, he won't go into the old firm. You know he won't. No. Well, I ask you, Mrs. Temple, fancy sending a boy to Oxford and then putting him in the furniture business. <laughs> I'll listen. Excuse me, sir, your drinks. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Steve. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, will you and Mrs. Ferguson join us? Oh, that's very kind of you, but uh, we've got ours here. Oh. Well, here's to a pleasant trip, Mr. Ferguson. Thank yeah. you. And to your son, Richard. Yes. Happy birthday. Oh, oh that's, that's kind of you. Mighty kind. Thank you, Mrs. Temple. To Richard. 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 Declare, sir? No, no, that's uh, there's nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. All right, sir. Oh, there's Charlie. Mm, where? Hello, Charlie. Good morning, Mrs. Hello, oh, Charlie. Good morning, sir. Welcome home. Thank you, Charlie. Have you got the car? Yes, sir. It's all ready, sir. Everything's okay to... <laughs> on the beam, sir. Good. <laughs> I'll take the zip, Mrs. T. You hang on to the hat holes. Good morning, Mr. Temple. Hello, Inspector. Have you just arrived from New York? Yes. Uh, do you know my wife, Inspector? Darling, this is Inspector Gerard, one of Sir Graham's bright boys. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Temple? You say you've just flown in from New York? Yes. On flight 508? Yes, that's right. Well, you must have travelled over with a Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson. Yes, we did. 
What does he look like? Uh, that's Ferguson over there, the tall man with the brown overcoat. Are you looking for them? Yes. Why? I'm afraid I've got some very bad news for them. Oh? Last night, their son was murdered. agree with what you say about the Nelson girl, Inspector. On the other hand, if she was in love with the fellow... Mm. Yes, what is it, Sergeant? Mr. Temple, sir. Hello, Sir Graham. Good afternoon, Inspector. Good afternoon. Well, well, you look fit, Temple. Did you have a successful trip? Yes, very, thank you. How's Steve? Well, at the moment, she can't make up her mind whether she's in London or New York. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the Inspector tells me that you flew over from New York with a Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson. Yes, that's right, we did. Their son... Yes, I know. Look, Sir Graham, it's no good beating about the bush. I'm interested in this Ferguson case. That's why I'm here. Well, what can we do for you, Temple? Well, so far, I know very little about the case. I'd like to know exactly what happened. Yes, that's what we'd like to know, exactly what happened. Well, let me have the facts. Assume I know nothing whatever about the case. Go on, Inspector. Well, Richard Ferguson was a student at Oxford, Magdalen College. Although he hadn't a large circle of friends... He appears to have been reasonably popular and, as far as we can gather, had no enemies. Hmm. He lived in a self-contained flat which was actually the top floor of a house in Mortimer Close. Mortimer Close is in a residential part of Oxford, about a mile and a half from the college. <laughs> yes, I know. Go on, Inspector. Well, the house belongs to a Mrs Gulliver. Well, on the night of the murder, she went out to the pictures and met Richard just as she was leaving the house. According to Mrs. Gulliver, the boy seemed nervous and ill at ease, and he told her that he had a dinner date for eight o'clock with a girl called Dinah Nelson. Dinah Nelson? Well, to cut a long story short, Richard didn't keep that date. Miss Nelson waited from eight o'clock until approximately a quarter past nine. Go on. Mrs. Gulliver returned from the pictures just after ten. She heard no noise from the flat, and she assumed that Richard was still out with the girlfriend. The next morning, about half past seven, she took up his usual cup of tea. Uh, have you got the photograph, Sir Graham? Yes, here it is. When Mrs. Gulliver opened the bedroom door, Temple, this is what she saw. Good God! The boy was on the floor near the bed. He must have been shot at very close quarters because, as you can see, most of his face was almost completely blown away. Yes. Um... Who identified the body? Mrs. Gulliver, Dinah Nelson, and another friend of young Ferguson's called Mrs. Russell. However, just to be on the safe side, we made fingerprint tests of the dead man. The prints checked all right. They, they were Ferguson's. Hmm. Have you any idea of the time of the murder? The medical people won't commit themselves. Might have been any time between seven when Mrs. Gulliver saw him and midnight. What about a motive? That's just the point. There doesn't appear to be a motive. Hmm. Was anything missing? Yes, a ring. Richard used to wear it on his little finger. Yes, but I doubted the boy was murdered for a gold ring. No, it seems hardly likely, sir. There was a wallet in one of the drawers with 20-odd pounds in it. Yes? Well, I'm afraid that's about all. There was the postcard. Yes, but I doubt if that's really got anything to do with the case, sir. What postcard? The morning Mrs Gulliver discovered the body, one or two letters arrived for Richard and a postcard from Harrogate, which read, Having a wonderful time, regards Jonathan. We checked up on the card just in case Jonathan, whoever he might be, was trying to establish an alibi. But none of Richard's friends seems to have heard of anyone called Jonathan. I see. Hmm. Well, now I'd better tell you what happened last night, Sir Graham. Yes? Ferguson phoned me about half past six and asked Steve and me to go round to their hotel. He sounded pretty excited, and when we got to the hotel, he gave me a copy of a magazine called The New Feature. Um, here it is. The new feature? Yes, it's a highbrow periodical. Mm hmm Go on. Well, the magazine, marked private and addressed to Mr and Mrs Ferguson, was at the hotel when the Fergusons arrived. On page 14, there's an article on the international situation by a writer called Europa. You'll notice that someone has underlined the name Europa and scribbled a footnote. Yes. And do you see what it says? If you want to know who murdered your son, ask... Europa. Well, who is Europa? It's obviously a non-diplume. Mm, it's a non-diplume, all right, but... Well, Ferguson showed me the magazine and asked me to find out who Europa was. 
He also asked me, or rather his wife did, if I would investigate the case. I said I would. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we stayed talking until about half past ten, and then Steve and I left the hotel by the embankment entrance and strolled down past the gardens to the spot where I'd parked the car. But to my surprise, someone was sitting in it. Excuse me, but um, haven't you made a mistake? Uh, Mr. Temple? Yes? Oh, please forgive me for sitting in your car, but I did want to see you, and I was afraid I might miss you. I see, but... Uh... I'm Dinah Nelson. I was a friend of Richard Ferguson's. But what are you doing here, in our car? Well, I wanted to talk to Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson. Yes. I was just going into the hotel when I saw you and Mr. Temple drive up. It was in the evening paper that you flew over from New York with the Ferguson's. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, Miss Nelson. Uh, you get in the back, Steve. I'll sit in front with Miss Nelson. Yes, all right, then. Well, now, suppose you take a deep breath and start at the beginning. Mm. Thank you, Mrs. Temple. I was very friendly with Richard Ferguson. About 18 months ago, we became unofficially engaged. For about a year, we were terribly happy together. And then, quite suddenly, Richard's attitude changed towards me. How do you mean, changed? Well, he, he used to write, you know. He wanted to be a writer and... Mm -hmm. Well, he suddenly got awfully cynical and, and, and bitter about things. He started criticising me. He started to compare me with a woman called Mavis Russell. Who was she? Oh, she was a friend of Richard's, a writer. She's friendly with quite a lot of the students. Her real name is Mavis Russell, but she writes under the name of Europa. Does she by Timothy? Go on, Miss Nelson. Well, to be quite candid, I don't like Mrs Russell. I never have liked her. Oh, I suppose I was jealous of her. But Mr Temple... I think she had an evil influence over Richard. Evil influence? Oh, I have no proof, no real proof of what I'm saying, but I think that directly or indirectly she was responsible for his murder. Is that why you wanted to see the Fergusons? To tell them about Mrs. Russell? Yes. Have you told the police what you think? Yes, I saw Inspector Gerard last night. Well? Well, all he did was ask me a lot of silly questions about somebody I'd never even heard of. Somebody called Jonathan. Jonathan? Yes. Apparently, this person, Jonathan, sent Richard a picture postcard from Harrogate or somewhere, and the police can't account for it. As if it matters. Miss Nelson, what sort of a person is this Mrs. Russell? To meet, I mean. Oh, charming, good-looking, wealthy... When did you first meet her? Oh, about six months ago. My boss, Professor Dillwright, gave a cocktail party, and Mrs. Russell was one of the guests. I introduced her to Richard. Miss Nelson, tell me... Did you send a copy of the magazine, The New Feature, to Mr. Ferguson? The New Feature? No. Why do you ask? Well, because someone did. With an interesting footnote about Europa, alias Mavis Russell. Well, it wasn't me, Mrs. Temple. It wasn't me. Oh, and then you're not the only person who doesn't like Mrs. Russell. Well, that's what happened last night, Sir Graham. <laughs> After our talk, Miss Nelson decided that she couldn't face the Fergusons, so we took her home. She's staying with a married sister, a Mrs. Mackintosh, for two or three days. My dear Temple, it's perfectly obvious that Miss Nelson sent Ferguson the magazine and that her theory about Mrs. Russell is pure imagination. Most theories are imagination, Inspector. Have you seen Mrs. Russell? Yes, I have, and she's a very charming woman. Oh, no doubt. Temple, do you remember an old friend of yours called Red Harris? Yes, of course, but I'd hardly call him an old friend. Well, you did him a favour... A very big favour, remember? Oh, yes, but that was a long time ago. I provided the evidence that proved he was innocent, that's all. But why mention Red Harris? Well, he spent three days in Oxford this week. He was there the night young Ferguson was murdered. Oh. Have you spoken to him? Yes. Well? Oh, he's got an alibi, a very good one. But I, I thought I'd mention it, Temple. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take this magazine down to Rogers and get a report on the handwriting, sir. Yes, all right, Inspector. Temple. Yes? If you don't think Miss Nelson sent this magazine to Ferguson, then who do you think did send it? Your guess is as good as mine, Inspector. Yes, but what is your guess? Well, it might have been Mrs. Russell. Mrs. Russell? Good heavens, man, she wouldn't throw suspicion onto herself. Wouldn't she? It has been done, Inspector. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, hello, Steve. I'm sorry I'm late. I'll take your coat, Barney. Oh, thank you. Anyway. Did you see Sir Graham? Yes, I've only just left the yard. Is there someone in the drawing room? Yes, it's Mr. Mackintosh. I Macintosh. told him you were out, but he insisted on waiting. He's some relation to Dinah Nelson. Well, how long has he been waiting? Only two or three minutes. Hmm. All right. Let's see what it's all about. Oh, good evening, Mr. Temple. Good evening. Uh, my name's Mackintosh, Reggie Mackintosh. Oh, well, what can I do for you, Mr. Mackintosh? Well, I understand you saw my sister-in-law last night, Mr. Temple, Dinah Nelson. That's right. But... Uh, well, I suppose you're a very busy man, Mr. Temple, so I'd better come straight to the point. Yes, do. Well, you see, Dinah was very friendly with Richard Ferguson, the young man that was murdered. Yes, so she told me. Did she also tell you that the police asked a lot of questions about a postcard? A card that was supposed to have been sent to young Ferguson by a friend of his called Jonathan? She did mention it, yes. Well, now, a rather curious thing has happened, Mr Temple. Uh -huh. Oh, whether it's of any importance or not, I wouldn't like to say, but... Well? Well, when I went down to breakfast this morning, the post had already arrived. And there was this postcard in the letterbox. Thank okay. you. You can see for yourself it's addressed to Dinah and was posted in Harrogate. Having a wonderful time regards Jonathan. But that's just what was on the other car. Exactly, Mrs Temple. But your sister-in-law, Miss Nelson, said that she'd never heard of anyone called Jonathan. I know. But what did she say when you showed her this postcard? I haven't shown it to her. You haven't? No. Why not? Well, Dinah's a strange girl, Mr Temple. She's highly strung, emotional... And I thought that if she saw this card, she'd think that the police suspect that she had something to do with this dreadful business. Do you think she did have anything to do with it? Oh, no, of course not. Dinah wouldn't harm a fly. Besides, she was in love with Richard Ferguson. You don't murder the person you're in love with. Well, it has been known, Mr Mackintosh. Tell me, was Richard a friend of yours, too? No. I don't suppose I met him more than half a dozen times. My wife and I used to go up to Oxford occasionally to see Dinah, and, well, naturally we bumped into Richard. Did you like him? Yes, I did. He was a pleasant chap. Oh, he took himself a little too seriously, perhaps, but uh, I can't for the life of me imagine why anyone should want to murder him. How long is Dinah staying with you? Uh, two or three days. I believe she's due back on Monday. Do many people know that she's staying with you? Oh, well, I couldn't say. Uh, she always does stay with us, of course, when she comes to London. Mr Mackintosh, on your visits to Oxford, did you ever meet a woman called Mrs Russell? Yes, I did. She was a friend of Richard's. She used to encourage him a lot. Uh, with his writing, I mean. <laughs> yes, I don't think Dinah's very keen on Mrs Russell. No, I rather gathered that. Well, thank you, Mr Mackintosh. Um, I'll take care of this card for the time being. I hope I did the right thing in bringing it to you. Mm -hmm, you did. Uh, well, goodbye, Mrs Temple. I hope we'll meet again sometime. I hope so. I'll show you out. Oh, thanks. Goodbye, Mr Temple. Goodbye. Who are you ringing for? I'm trying to get hold of a man called Red Harris. Do you remember him, Steve? We met him about six years ago. Um, tall man with a thin moustache. Mm, that's right. Why do you want to talk to him? Well, Sir Graham seems to think that he's mixed up in this business, so I thought I might as well... Look, Steve, you take the phone. Uh -huh. Ask for Harris. He's more likely to come to the phone if it's a girl speaking. All right. What's the number? Hopton 5921. It's a public house near the Elephant and Castle. I've an idea he'll be there. Hopton 5921. That's right. I want to speak to Mr Harris, please. What, Mr Harris? You've got the wrong number, lady. Mr Red Harris. Oh, Red. Who's he calling? His mother. <laughs> Are you Doris? The cute little number he's always talking about? What do you mean, cute little number? <laughs> OK, I'll get him. Hold on. Well, what's happening? He's coming. All right. Give it to me. I'll take it. Doris? Listen, I told you not to ring me, didn't I? Hello, Red. How are you? Who's that? Who's it speaking? It's Temple. Paul Temple, remember me? Samo said it was Doris on the <laughs> yes, phone. That's right, Red. There's nothing to worry about. It was my wife. Ah, I see. Well, what is it? What do you want? Oh, just a friendly chat. It's a long time since we met. It's about time we got together again, Red. Listen, I'm going straight now. I'm in the motor car rank. Business. Second-hand cars. Straight as a die, Mr. Temple. Oh, that's fine. I'm delighted to hear it. What is it you want? You spent two nights at Oxford this week, didn't you? That's right. Why? What do you mean, why? There's nothing to stop me going up to Oxford if I feel like it, is there? 
Well, if you must know, I went up there on business. Picked up a car, a Lombard. She's a beauty. I only done 2,000 miles. You didn't meet a young man called Richard Ferguson by any chance? Well? Red, did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard. Now keep out of this Ferguson business. Don't be a damn fool, Temple. Keep out of it. Red, listen. Red! He's rung off. What did he say? Paul? What did he say? He said he was going straight. He said he was in the motor car business and... Steve, what time is it? It's just gone six. Tell Charlie to get the car. I'm going to see Red Harris. I'm going to talk to him. I'll be back about nine. You're rattled, Red. What's the matter with you tonight? You couldn't hit the side of a house. You're lucky, Simo. Dead lucky. <laughs> You've always been lucky at snooker. <laughs> That's a tenner you owe me. Now, nah, pick that cue up again and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play you 200 up a billion, see? Give you a 50 start and a winner. Hey, looking for someone, mate? Yes, I'm looking for Mr. Red Harris. Oh, you haven't far to look. A pal of yours, Red? No. Hi, Maris. Oh. Who are you? What do you want? I understand you've got a car for sale, a two and a half litre Lombard. Yeah, that, that's right. Is that it outside with trade plates? Yes, that's it. How many miles has it done? Two thousand, genuine. The owner only bought it to look at. Ah, oh, shut up, Simon. What are you asking for it? Seventeen fifty. Ah. Do you mind if I look at it? No, no, it's uh, a pleasure. Yeah, I'll see you later, Simon. Okay. What's the idea, Temple? I told you over the phone that Get I Get in don't... the car. We can't talk here. We've nothing to talk about. Get in that car, Red. OK. Now, what is it? What's on your mind? Six years ago, I did you a favour, Red. I know, and I haven't forgotten it. Do you remember what you said? You said, any time you want anything, Mr Temple, anything, just ask Red Harris. Yes, and I meant it. Honestly, I did. I'm a straight shooter, Mr Temple. I, I say exactly what I think. Then tell me. Why did you spend two days in Oxford this week? I told you, I went there on business. I bought this car. You were in Oxford the night young Ferguson was murdered. I, I, I don't know anything about Ferguson. That's not what you told me on the phone. Well, what do you mean? You said, keep out of this Ferguson business, Temple. Did, did I say that? You did, Mr Harris. Temple, listen. I'm a friend of yours. You did me a good turn once and I haven't forgotten it. But I don't know anything about Ferguson. I went up to Oxford to buy this car. Listen, Red. Let's get this straight. I'm not here because the police sent me. Well, then why are you here? I'm here because the boy's parents asked me to investigate this case. I'm not interested in what sort of a racket you're running. I'm interested in two things. Who murdered Richard Ferguson and why? I don't know anything about Ferguson. I never heard of this kid until I read about the murder. You're lying. Now, listen, Red. I intend to get pretty tough over this business because I'm not going... Hello. What's this you've got in your pocket? How long have you been carrying a revolver? It isn't a revolver, it's my pipe. Eh? Ah, ah, no, let go of my arm. Temple, leave go, will you? What sort of a pipe is this? You stupid fool to get mixed up in this sort of thing. Now, give it to me, will you? Give it back now, to wait me. Wait a minute. Is this the gun that shot Ferguson? Oh, don't be a fool, Temple. Of course it isn't. You know darn well that murder isn't... Hey, what's that car? He's got a gun! Get down! It's a good job I saw him. Otherwise, he... Look, let's get back to the pub. I want a drink. Who was in that car? Who I... fired the shot? I, I, I don't know. But you recognised him. You knew he was going to shoot. I don't know who it was. I, I tell you, I don't know. I, I'm going back in the pub. I must have a drink, Temple. Red, wait a minute. You're mixed up in this Ferguson case. If you didn't murder Ferguson yourself, then you know who did. Temple, listen. You once did me a favour, OK? Now I'm doing you one. Keep out of this Ferguson business. But I'm in it already. And if you've got any sense, Reg, you'll talk. You'll talk to me now as a friend before it's too late. I'll tell you one thing, Temple, and then we're all square. I don't owe you a favour and you don't owe me one, OK? OK. They forgot the ring. Oh, 
Thank goodness you've come. What's the matter, Steve? Mrs. Ferguson's here. She's in a dreadful state. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think she's going out of her mind. But what's she doing here? She insists on seeing you. Mr. Ferguson had to bring her. The poor man just didn't know what... <clears throat> here he is. Oh, hello, Ferguson. What's the trouble? Temple, please believe me, I, I wouldn't have brought Helen here, but she absolutely insisted on seeing you. Where is she? She's in our bedroom, Paul. I've given her a sedative. Well, hadn't we better send her a doctor? She won't hear of a doctor. She simply won't hear of it. No, it's you she wants to see. This business seems to have unbalanced her. She's imagining all sorts of things, That's Temple. That's not true, Robert. Oh, Helen. Oh, hello, Mrs. Ferguson. Mr. Temple, I've got to talk to you. Well, here I am. Robert thinks I'm imagining things. But I'm not. I swear I'm not. I'm quite sure you're not, Mrs. Ferguson. But you don't know what she's saying, but Temple. But, Robert, it's true. I swear it is. Mr. Temple, I know you won't believe me. You'll think I've gone completely out of my mind. But do you know what happened this morning? Yes, Mrs. Ferguson. I know. You saw your son. That was the first episode of Paul Temple and the Jonathan Mystery by Francis Durbridge. The part of Paul Temple was played by Peter Cook and Steve by Marjorie Westbury. The play was produced for the BBC by Martin C. Webster.